In this video, we're going to be taking a look at multiplying whole numbers and decimals. Now today's goal, and I will want you to write this down in your notes, is to be able to multiply whole numbers by a decimal. In today's tip, and I want you to write this down in your notes as well, it's important to know that the total number of digits to the right of the decimal in the problem needs to equal the total number of digits to the right of the decimal for my answer. Okay, so I want you to pause this video and write this tip down in your notes, and this will be extremely helpful whenever you start multiplying. Now we're going to take a look at some problems, and what I will do is do a couple for you. We'll do some together, and then I'll have you do some all by yourself. So we're going to multiply whole numbers by decimals. Now, what we're going to do first of all, we will always write the problem out. I want you to use graph paper whenever you write the problem out. So we're going to take a look at a problem of 1 and 3 tenths, and we put our decimal, we can even put our decimal in the same box as our digit, 1 and 3 tenths times 88. Okay, now what we'll do is we will multiply okay, these two numbers together. Now it's important to know that even though you're working with decimals, multiplication facts are still the same. Okay, however, the first thing that we want to do is we're going to record in parentheses how many digits to, are to the right of this decimal. So this factor is 1 and 3 tenths. So I have one digit to the right of the decimal for my top factor. I don't have any for this factor, obviously, because it's a whole number. So we're going to put that one, and we'll come back to that one in just a second. So the first thing, thing you want to start doing, we've multiplied two digit by two digit numbers, three digit by two digit, we'll, two digit. We'll just do that. We're not going to drop our decimal. It's a little bit different with multiplication. So we're going to ignore that decimal, and then we're going to multiply eight times three. That's going to give us 24. We'll put our four in the ones place, and we'll carry our two. Then we have 8 times 1 gives us 8, plus 2 gives us 10. We're still ignoring that decimal. Now what I will do is erase the numbers that I carried. I'll use a different color ink, signifying another step. Now we're going to multiply by my number in the tens place. I'm going to put a 0 in the ones place. Now I'm, start, now I'm ready to multiply. 8 times 3 is 24. Put my 4 there. Carry the 2. Still ignoring that decimal. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 2 is 10. So we have our two partial products written out. We're still going to ignore a decimal. We're not going to worry about it just yet. Now what we're going to do is add our two partial products. Now we have 4 and 0 gives us 4. 4 plus 0 gives us 4. 1 plus 0 gives us 1. And then we'll bring down our 1. Now, if you remember our key tip, which is the total number of digits to the right of the decimal in the problem, these equals the total number of digits to the right of the decimal for your answer. If I take a look at this, and I'm going to look at my number in parentheses, I have one. I only have one digit to the right of my decimal for my problem. That means I need to have one digit to the right of the decimal for my answer. So I will put my decimal right here, giving me the answer of 114 and 4 tenths. Now we're going to work out this next problem, 4 and 2 tenths times 6. The first thing I want to do is count however many digits are to the right of my decimal and my factors. So for this, my top factor, I have one digit to the right of the decimals, and I'll just put that in parentheses. Now we can ignore the decimal and just multiply how we know how to do it. Okay, so now we have 6 times 2 is going to give me 12. Put my 2 here in my 1's place, and I'll carry my 1 over. Still ignoring that decimal, four, 6 times 4 is going to give me 24, plus 1 will give me 25. Now this one's a little easier because it was a decimal times just a single digit. Okay, now we've come to our answer, 252. Now that is not the correct answer because we're multiplying 4 and 2 tenths times 6. So it's important to remember and to think about, does your answer even make sense? If I were to leave this at... 252, that would mean that 4 times 6 is close to a number of 252, which is not even close, okay? Not much, much less adding our decimal here of 2 tenths, okay? So 
we need to think about and make sure our answer makes sense our tip of the day the total number of digits to the right of the decimal in my problem needs to equal the total number of digits to the right of the decimal in my answer I have one total digit to the right of the decimal so I'm going to put my decimal right in between my 5 and my 2 see one digit to the right of my answer one digit to the right of my problem and I have the answer of 25 and 2 tenths now we're going to do this next problem together so I want you to write it down with me we are going to multiply 8 and 2 tenths times 3 so let's write this out in your math journal so 8 and 2 tenths times 3 Okay, now the first step, figuring out how many digits are to the right of the decimal in your problem. So I have one digit to the right. I'm going to put that in parentheses. That will help me remember that I have one digit to the right of the decimal in my problem. Okay, now from here we're going to start multiplying. 3 times 2 is going to give me 6. 3 times 8 is going to give me 24. Okay, this is not my answer just yet. That would mean 8.2 times 3 gives me a number of 246, and that does not make sense at all. Okay, We have one digit to the right of the decimal in my problem, so that means we need to have one digit to the right of the decimal for my answer. So I would put that decimal point right in between the 4 and the 6 there, Okay, Give me a total, giving me a total of 24 and 6 tenths. Okay, now we have this next problem of 8 and 25 hundredths times 16. I want you to write this problem out in your notes, and we'll do this together. So make sure you've written this problem out. And the first thing we're going to do is figure out how many places are to the right of my decimal in my problem. So I have 8 and 25 hundredths. There's two places, two digits to the right of my decimal this time, so I'm going to write a 2 in parentheses. Okay, now we can start multiplying, ignoring that decimal, okay, three digit by two digit problems. Okay, so the first step, six times five is going to give me 30, put my zero here, carry my three. The next step is multiplying six times two is 12, plus three is 15, put my five in the tens place, and carry my one. The next step, 6 times 8 is 48, plus 1 is 49. And this is a partial product, remember. I'm not finished with my problem just yet. Okay, what I will do now is just erase everything I've carried over. And now what I'm going to start doing is multiplying that 1 times 8 and 25 hundredths. However, that 1 is in the tens place, so what I need to do is put a zero in the ones place before I start multiplying in that tens place. So now we have 1 times 5 is going to give me 5. 1 times 2 is 2. And finally 1 times 8 is 8. This is the other partial product. So I have two partial products. Now what we will do is start adding these two partial products together. We've worked long and hard with multiplication. We don't want to make silly addition mistakes really really important to take your time so 0 plus 0 is going to give me 0 5 plus 5 will give me 10 I'll put my 0 in the tens place and carry my 1 to the hundreds place 1 and 9 gives me 10 plus 2 is 12 put my 2 in the hundreds place carry my 1 1 plus 4 is 5 plus 8 is 13 okay now we're not finished yet. What we need to do is see however many digits are to the right of the decimal in my problem. And I have two digits. Okay, so that means I have one digit, two digits now that need to be to the right of the decimal. So I will take my decimal point and put it right there between the two and the zero, giving me a grand total of 132. It's really important to make sure that your answer makes sense. And that decimal will help you know that. Originally, I would have the total of 13,200, which would not make sense, even if you ignore the number to the right of the decimal of 8 times 6, would not give you anything close to 13,200. However, we put our decimal where it needs to go, and 132 would be our answer. Now, what I want you to do is to work these two problems out on graph paper all by yourself. Write the problems out, work them out, 
and when you're finished with that you can press play and then I will have the answers for you so I want you to pause the video now okay now that you've worked these two problems out you should have these answers for the first one 66 and 56 hundredths you can see I had two digits to the right of the decimal for my problem and then two digits to the right of the decimal for my answer the next one is 9 and 17 hundredths times 44 gives me 403 and 48 hundredths okay so you can see all the work that I did check your problem make sure it matches up with mine if you have any questions about this topic please come and see me